Mm. Or a chocolate milkshake. Or butterscotch milkshake. Oh, How I don't know delicious. whether I fancy a fruity one or not. Well, you have a fruity one, then it's one of your five a day, isn't it? Which one is that then? Well, you have a strawberry ripple ice cream. Well, which one was the blackberry and uh, thingy apple? Blackberry. Because I like that a lot. Strawberry and, oh, uh, black, apple and black, black currant yeah. smoothie. Yeah, so I, I like think that it's one. that one there. You sure can I Yeah, yeah. So, do you know they look like oh no, they're, they're perfectly spherical and I can't get them out. <laughs> Disaster! They look like little zeroids, don't they? They are little zeroids. Um, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Oh, oh, how like could they do that to us? It's Chocolate that you can't remove from the box! There you go. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Panic over. I think we might be on, by the way. On where? On Fab Row. But I can't tell because the, um, ah. the feed's not working. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, well that's going well, isn't it? Hello everyone. Uh, hi. Oh, there's people looking. Oh, hello. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, you've caught us um, raiding the chocolate box. Oh, uh, really and that's cool. not a euphemism. That, oh, um, wow. Yeah, pretty good, aren't they? Mm. Oh, I w- we should get sponsored by a chocolate company. Mm. Imagine that every month. That would be amazing. That would be delicious. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello, Scott, who says hi, guys. Good evening, James. Pilson Wood, who says evening, guys. Hello, Chris Dale. Chocolate? I mean, hello, he says. <laughs> I'll save you one, Chris. I will save you a chocolate for next time. Mm. Hello, everybody. While we sit here and very rudely um, speak with our mouths full, and welcome you to yet another edition yes, of another edition. Fab Live. <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen you. Mm. So how are you all? Keith Roberts says hi. Uh, John Davis says welcome back. Indeed, the last time we were here... It's been a little break, hasn't it? I think it was May. Wasn't Is it? That- yeah. Was it April? No, it was April. It was the end of April, wasn't we it? We didn't do one in May then, did we? Did we skip May? Somebody remind us. We don't know what's uh, going on. Good evening from Sw- Sunny Swansea, says Mark Arman, uh, Arnold. Arnold, sorry. Uh, Ned Kelly. Hello, everyone. Well, hello and welcome um, to Fab Live. Another hour or so of <laughs> chocolates and nonsense. <laughs> and um, yeah, I suppose we ought to introduce ourselves as usual. Yeah. Shall we do it? I'll put the things up like we normally do. You carry on while I finish my chocolate. Well... I'm uh, Jamie Anderson, uh, son of the late great Jerry Anderson, MBE. Mm. Should, should have been Sir Jerry Anderson, really, but absolutely, we can call him that anyway. Indeed. And uh, I'm uh, here. Well, I don't. Why am I here? Well, you're <laughs> to get chocolate. You know, I've never really thought of it like that. <laughs> why, why are you here, Jamie? Uh, I don't know. No, I'm here. In this was all to... your idea. Let's face it. Uh, I don't know if it was, but mm. my name was yours. Anyway, I uh, yes, I'm here to celebrate an, an amazing legacy yes. of my dear late father and uh, celebrate it all with you uh, once a month, <laughs> ideally. Although yeah. we don't always manage that. Yeah. But thank you for coming back. Indeed. And who are you? Uh, my name is Richard James. Um, I'm an actor, a playwright, father and uncle and husband. Yes. Um, you are those things. I am. And uh, I was in Jerry Anderson's Space Precinct in 1990. <laughs> yes. A long time ago. I was about three, I think. That's what, of course you, know, you were. Yeah, of course I was. Uh, where I first met Jamie, in the studios of, uh, the, the, the corridors of uh, Pima Studios. Ah, when I had a lot more hair. You did. Uh, a lot more hair here, and a yes. lot less here. Yes, that's right. Now, how old are you, nine, ten, something like that? I would have been nine when you started shooting, yeah. Anyway, so we thought uh, it would be a great idea to get together and have these little fab live uh, broadcasts uh, every month. And, well. We seem to be managing it every now and then, don't we? Yeah, we do them. Yeah, on, we do. on average, we probably manage 11 a year. Now, here's something that's interesting, because Susan Dyer says you're the image of your father. I'm well, assuming that comment is directed to you. I'm guessing so, unless you know no. Mr James. <laughs> and uh, we had that conversation earlier, didn't we? We did, yeah. And I'm, I'm looking more and more like him with every passing moment. Yes. You see, I can't quite see it, but then... <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Yeah, but it is reassuring, uh, Susan. Yeah. Thank you, because if I didn't, then maybe... Yeah, somebody's been telling porkies. Yeah, they live in us. That's the <clears> wonderful <throat> thing, isn't it? Our parents when they when they go. Uh, Andrew, ah, oh, Andrew Sierra is looking forward to something. Look, can you see that comment there? Yeah, yeah, to the brand new podcast, which we will mention later. We will mention it later. Mm. Yeah, yeah, M- more stuff for us to do because yeah. we're obviously so efficient at doing oh, one thing once a month. <laughs> we're definitely going to manage something weekly, oh. aren't we, Richard? Oh yes, that's so going to happen, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, what you can do for us this evening is if you can uh, if watching this on your mobile devices or. Uh, at yeah. home on your laptops or desktops if you could hit the share button uh, beneath this broadcast that means um ralph titterton says did you get the flash stick by the way uh, no ralph i haven't received the flash stick um we should carry on our business elsewhere not on here uh, but i've been i've been away all day so it may have arrived while i was out so if you hit the share button which i'm about to do now but i'm doing it too this broadcast that means that everyone on your facebook timeline will see us 
wittering away. And who knows, they might enjoy it and they might watch for more than a few minutes. <laughs> might know. They uh, might stay until it gets really interesting. They won't bother. No. Uh, so there we are. So welcome back to Fab Live episode 15 or so, I think. 15. Please. Yeah. And we've got the usual news and uh, viewer emails and uh, Fab and Fibs and Blankety Blanks. All the favourites. All the old favourites are there. Yeah, yep. it's all there. Um, all the stuff that you all look forward to so very much. <laughs> and contribute to, I'm happy to say. Uh, yeah. This week's Blankety Blanks, or this month's Blankety Blanks have been supplied by Chris Dale, who yes. I know you all know. And uh, Fab and Fibs have been supplied by Mark Simpson Wedge, who, again, I know a lot of you know. So uh, thank, thank you, you very much. for getting me off the hook uh, with that. <laughs> very kind of you. Yes. It massively gets us off the hook when you send stuff like that in, so it thank really you. It really does. We really, really like it. And then, of course, thank you for yours as well. We haven't used yours this time, but I'll have another look and maybe squeeze them in uh, next time we meet. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Uh, hello, Tom, and hello, Keith. Uh, Ross Patterson, I got you on whilst finishing my pie and mash. Well, what, what's in the pie, Ross? Because Gosh. if it's a fish pie, I'm not so interested. Well, you wouldn't have fish pie with mash, would you? Because fish you pie generally do. has you mash might, on top. You might be a big mashed potato fan. Well, he could be a big mashed potato fan. I would suspect he's eating some sort of meat pie with his mashed potatoes. Right, Ross, could you confirm? Because this yep. is very important yep. to us we, now. we must know. The nation must know. <laughs> Got off a good uh, start. Steak and kidney. The, well, you see, steak. There you go. Thank you, Ross. Phew. God, no, God, I'm, I'm really have, jealous, though. I should have placed a bet, shouldn't I? Will yeah. Farrell says he's got three Thunderbirds hoodies. Ah, well, we'll be talking about those later and showing you an amusing photograph. We will. Excellent. Uh, you don't like fish pie? But Andrew, I do like fish pie. Um, I've just, I'm just not really in the mood for it. Right I now. love a fish pie. I love a fish pie with smoked haddock in it. That lovely yellowy, strong uh, I'd flavor. I'd rather have fish. kedgeree if we're going to go for something haddock. Not haddock-y. kedgeree. You not? No, go for a fish, fish pie in the right, other day. A, a fish pie. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this might get more interesting yeah. shortly, possibly. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Anyway, should we? What are we doing? Should we well, talk we about could, other things, or should we? Could, um, we could head straight for some news. Uh, yeah, our oh, stream cute's freezing, unfortunately. I'm just going to reach and get a... a yeah, you can. A, a, a unbranded... I'm going to uh, pose something then to the viewers while yeah, you do that. Do it, I'm just a bit thirsty. So I read recently that there was a survey of people uh, to choose their favourite fictitious place to live. Did you see that recently in the press? I didn't see that, no. What, I think you, it was, what newspaper was it in? I don't, it was sponsored by some estate agent, I think. Or it, was. it was one of these BuzzFeed things. Mm. Uh, and uh, have a guess, maybe... Could you choose two or three things that you think might have come up, say, in the top 20? The favourite fictitious places to live, and at home as well, if you've got any ideas. And we'll see, what, we'll see where this is leading in a minute. Well, I mean, the obvious one is an idyllic island somewhere in the Pacific. Indeed. I imagine. Yeah. So Tra- yeah. Tracy Island must have been there. Yeah. Yeah, it was, indeed. Uh, there are others. There are no other Jerry Anderson ones, but I, oh. I was going to leave that to last, but you went straight in. Oh, sorry. I no, thought no. I thought there were multiple Anderson ones. No. I've no, ruined the game now. Not, yes, mm. but it's not really a game. Uh, so we had uh, things like Downton Abbey. Uh, we had the Emerald City from Wizard of Oz. Okay. The TARDIS, I think, was number one, which is a bit strange. What? Yeah. But, yes, at number 12, people's favourite fictitious place to live was uh, indeed Tracy Island. So I was wondering, uh, if you could take your pick of all the various uh, residences... From the, uh, this is a bit strange, isn't it? Yeah, From all weird. the Anderson universe, where would you choose to live? Skybase, perhaps, or uh, Tracy Island, or Precinct eighty eight uh, around uh, Demeter City on the planet Altor? Where yeah. would you choose to live in the whole of the Jerry Anderson universe if you could? What, what do was so? the, the big spinning hub thing called in Space Precinct? Uh, the, the the resident place, the residential hub, I think it was called. It wasn't called that. Well, at I don't all. think it ever had a name. Space House, maybe. <laughs> Where Brogan lived, yes. Shay nice. Brogan. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yes, yeah. that'd be good. Thanks. So, like yes, that. give us your thoughts. Cloud base, says Mark Arnold. I want to live on cloud base. Hello from the Netherlands, says Robbie Grondel. Good evening. Hello, Robbie. Yeah. So, um, yes, tell us where you're There's quite a few, uh, quite a lot of love for cloud base. Yeah, of course, of course. I would constantly worry about those turbines shutting down and yeah. uh, plummeting yeah. to my doom. Yeah, space suburb de- uh, Delta, says Chris Dale. Thank you, Chris Dale. Thank you. I knew it had a name. Yeah, has to be cloud base, says Harry Rayner. Sky base, says Will Farrell. Uh, yeah, very popular. Excellent. Good choice. Well, um, no, I just thought I'd throw that in while you were having a Coke. Yeah, sorry for ruining the um, yeah, Tracy the Island thing. No, I'm, I'm good at that. Anyway, should we do some, <laughs> some sort of to. news? I think we should. Uh, and we should add as well that we were both massively delayed by Great Rest Railway. You can't say that. Shout out to GWR. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, again, this will probably be as as disorganised as usual, if not more so. Oh, sure. Yeah. Even when we have plenty of time, it's still pretty disorganised. It's still a total disaster. Yeah. yeah. So cloud base is solar powered, says Mark Arnold. Oh, so. Yeah. What? 
what if you know the solar um, panel conducting things yeah. break or yeah. you know anything could go wrong yeah uh, anyway Nick right. Kelly feels like he lives in Captain Black's spooky graveyard oh yeah maybe he's had a bad day probably <laughs> I know I have. <laughs> Jenny, uh, it only got worse since you saw me. Right, time for some news. Oh, at last. Here it comes. Yes. It's the news. Uh, ah, there we go. Well done. I didn't, news. I, didn't I, I left the news ticker on, but otherwise yeah. everything's good. That's good. It's all fine, Jamie. No one's noticed. No, well, I have now. I've told them. Yeah, I know. Well, that's your fault, isn't it? Oops. Uh, oh, well. Um, news? Yeah, we've got a bit, little bit of news this month. Great. Uh, although, I, I realise a lot of you will have seen it if you have been on the Jerry Anderson website, um, which, by the way, we've been having terrible, terrible trouble with. Mm. Um, so if you're on the Anderson website recently and it's very slow or uh, things don't work, then apologies. Um, we're working on fixing it. Yes. But it's a real... Uh, Good. <clears throat> Is it? Ache. Is it? Yeah, somewhere yeah. painful. Yeah. It's a yeah. pain. Well, they'll be patient, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep, it, keep enjoying the website. And thanks for not whinging. Uh, do your own children get involved in all the Thunderbirds stuff? Well, I've only got dogs, uh, Susan, so I tend not to try to dress yeah. them up as anything. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet you would if you could. Yeah. Or are they interested in being involved? Do, my, my, my children have no interest at all. Why would they be interested in something their dad was in? Well, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Exactly. Why would you even suggest such a thing? <laughs> Time to move on. Yes. Uh, so yes, there's lots of bits and pieces of news. Shall we start it off with some news? Some <laughs> some UFO news. Oh sure. Well, it's retro UFO news. Yeah. Um, ITV snuck out a new release of a, a, a repackaged classic DVD set. Yeah. Of the original series, and it's got a very lovely cover. It has. ITV have done great work yeah. recently. Yeah. No, no, I'm because it's there. Oh, you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, of course. We're looking. We're both thinking it. God, yeah. this looks really amazing, isn't it? I just love that. I look at that bit there. I forgot to play along. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah now I've got it. Uh, right. Anyway, so on eight DVDs, region two. So if you Excellent. live outside mm -hmm. of Europe, then you'll have to get a multi-region DVD player, which would be a great investment if you like Anderson stuff. Um, it looks very smart. So it's it's a you know now is a good time if you've never bought UFO, or you're running out of shelf space because the old set was on two different volumes. Yeah, uh, it's a great thing to get. Any extras and things on there? Do you know or do you, do you know what? Sure. No, the frustrating thing is that um, we haven't we've been struggling to get information from ITV mm. about the uh, the set. Mm. Um, I think they've said they are they've left off the extended extras. But that's as much as I know. Okay. But there are eight discs. Great. And it's digitally remastered and looks very pretty. And it takes up um, less shell space. Well, always good. Yes. Glyn Evans Hughes, Blu-ray. It's been out on Blu-ray for ages. In fact, so long that there's even a second edition of the Blu-ray. So if you haven't already got the Blu-ray, then get the Blu-ray. Yeah. There you go. Buy the Blu-ray for the extra, says Amanda Hunter. There you go. Simon uh, says the Blu-ray is better. That's a matter of opinion. We can't well, possibly comment. It's high definition for indeed, sure. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Adrian Gummer says uh, UFO hooray. I know he's a big fan. He's our sound operator on tour. Is he? Yes. Oh, hello, Adrian. Uh, I'm so sorry about Richard. Will they edit out all the chain smoking on UFO, says Adrian. No. You see, it's all its time. It's a museum piece almost, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Because it didn't famously Steven Spielberg edit out all the guns in E.T. for a, a release, a DVD release. or a I didn't release. know that. Yeah. He replaced them with walkie-talkies. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's true. Because he was concerned about yeah. having, having guns on film. But no, I think the smoking can definitely stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's time. You can't go around um, kind of... Uh, well, what's well, the what's the thing called when you you know vaping, not vaping. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no uh, historical revisionism. Oh, well, whatever. well, I prefer vaping. It's much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there's no point doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, network are much better at releasing answers. Well, that's I can't possibly comment on that, but they do do a very good job. Yeah, we love Network. Yes, they do great stuff. Um, Sterling work. In fact, I've got a lovely meeting with Network tomorrow morning. Are you allowed to tell us that? I'm not going to say what the content of it is, but I'm seeing Network tomorrow about something that's coming up. In fact, a couple of things that are coming up quite soon. Crumbs. Mm. By the way, you've just reminded me something. I've got to make a note. That oh, I've got go to on. tell you when this broadcast is over. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Fine I know enough. what it's about, actually. Do you? Yeah, I think it is. It's to do with one of the things, isn't it? It is, yeah. Oh, you guys are going to be so excited. Well, yeah. some of you are. Can't tell you now. Anyway. Leave it with us. Should we... Oh, sure. Let's move on. Let's to move that. on. Any more news? Yeah, there's other, uh, there's other bits and pieces. Should we have some merchandise news or other news? Uh, let's start with some other news and then do the merch. Okay, fine. 
Um, well, I've got two items of podcast-related news. Great. So let's go for uh, an older bit of podcast news first. Are you having another chocolate? I'm going to have another chocolate. Okay, go for it. Uh, so um, many of you may know of Big Finish Productions. Never heard of them. Purveyors of fine audio drama. Mm. Um, but you may not know that Nick Briggs and Benji Clifford, who do the Big Finish podcast, are also, uh, they've done their own spin-off podcast called The Benji and Nick Show, which is full of retro nattering about nonsense and um, recently they've done a space 1999 episode uh, all about breakaway where they just chat through having watched it and you know say some nonsense about it uh, and then annoyingly in the middle of it nick uh, rang me on facetime oh yeah and so i'm in the podcast being <laughs> slightly irritated by him not realizing i'm being recorded great uh, and they've now made a weekly feature of that where i get called up oh it's a running joke it's, it? it's hilarious how we laugh yeah. anyway the benji and nick show is on itunes and in other good places where you can get uh, podcasts and i thoroughly recommend their breakaway episode which has been one of the most popular episodes to date i think mm, great but also, sure in it. Is that what you're suggesting? No, absolutely not. No, people wouldn't have known that when they listened in. But just, you know, the fact that it's an Anderson show. They've also done um, a Thunderbirds episode in the not too, not too distant past um, on Attack of the Alligators. Uh-huh. So you might also want to give that a try. Yeah. So there's that bit of podcast news, but not more excitingly. Oh, go, go on. on. No, go on, go on. You carry on. I've just seen a question, but carry on. Okay, well, I can answer it in a minute. Yeah. Uh, perhaps more relevantly to our fab live viewers. Yes, yes. Good, look, look at that. What on earth is going on? The Jerry Anderson podcast <laughs> is coming. Now, before you all panic, because yes. we've had a lot of panic going on, oh. the podcast is not replacing Fag Live. <laughs> no, thank goodness it for that. It is not replacing it. It is a separate <laughs> entity. Uh, so, yes, as of the 2nd of July, we will be putting out a weekly Jerry Anderson podcast. We will It'll be co-hosted we. Yes. by us. <laughs> yes. Oh dear, mm. sorry. Yep. More of more of us, possibly <laughs> in your uh, ears, um, <clears throat> and we'll feature interviews and archive footage and features and uh, reviews and other bits and pieces and general nonsense. Um, and we've been recording interviews for the last week or so. I've got loads. I'm recording tomorrow and coming up, and we've got a, no- a lovely mixture of. Uh, actors, behind the scenes people, and um, famous names from the wider world yeah. who have been influenced by Jerry Anderson. Yeah. So that's rather exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very excited to get started. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And um, lots of people showing lots of interest. In well, the that is very. I'm glad to hear it. So that will also be available on uh, iTunes and Stitcher for those who have Android devices, um, and SoundCloud and lots of other places. Uh, and in fact, it's there is a prequel teaser episode live right now right. on iTunes and Stitcher. If you want to go looking for the Jerry Anderson podcast, please do us a huge favour and subscribe. And uh, even though it's based on a prequel episode where we just chat nonsense. What, really? Please, please do. Yes. <laughs> please do thought. give us a, a nice uh, review, um, a rating and rate and review that yeah. episode. Yeah. Because uh, it all helps when we do the proper launch. Yeah. Um, but we promise it'll be fun. Each episode will be about half an hour. Good amount of time for a commute and full of interesting-ish interviews. If you have a question you'd like answered on the podcast specifically and not on Fab Live, or both, mm. then you can send your question to podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. And something to look out for, or listen out for, I suppose, on the podcast, is our brand new uh, mashup theme tune by Benji Clifford. Yes, it sounds fantastic. It is great fun. It's so good. Thank you, Benji, for that. Yeah, it's so brilliant. Thanks, uh, thanks, Benji. Yeah, it is really good. Awesome. Nice. So that's Jerry Anderson Podcast. So there's a teaser episode up already. Yes, indeed. Just to give you a flavour of uh, what's to come and what we expect will be happening mm. in the future episodes. So you can subscribe on iTunes and then I suppose you'll get a notification every time a new episode is posted. Yes, right? so please do subscribe and the aim is to put them out every Monday morning. Yeah. So if you're feeling a bit down about starting the work week, or going back to yeah. work, or starting another week, whatever, then hopefully you'll be able to brighten your morning or at least, you know, you think yeah. they don't have to listen to us for the rest of the day. Now, David Power says, please try and get some interviews dealing with the sound effects on the shows. There's plenty of info on the special effects and music, but nothing on the sound effects. That's very interesting. Well, John and Jean Taylor are on my list to talk to, but um, it does that does require getting to them yeah. and we're a bit time uh, poor. Yes, but well, we are. <laughs> yes. But there's there's lots and lots of people to talk to and I will do my best to, to get as many of them on as possible. 
Sophie Aldred, Robert Cassidy suggests she loved Thunderbirds back in the day oh, and did a dissertation on funny it. Funny you should mention that, Robert. I think uh, Sophie may be coming on ooh, later in July. Great. Let's see. Great. Uh, so that will probably be out in August. Anyway, nice. yes. So um, this will be from July, I think. Is that when you're thinking? Second of July is our first release time. Okay. Simon Wood, Space Precinct Blu-ray. Yeah. What? Whatever happened to now, that? Now that can't happen, no, can it? Now, either. Simon, yes, there's an issue with that because Space Precinct was shot on 16 mil film and then transferred and edited on video. So in order to do a Blu-ray, we'd have to rescan all the 16 mil film, which we don't know where it is mm. as a starter, yeah. and then re-edit the whole thing, regrade it, put in all the effects. It would be yeah. a hugely expensive thing, and it's just not viable. And that's before you even start thinking about paying the actors again. It, yes, exactly. So, oh. so they will never, there will never, almost certainly never be a Blu-ray of Space Precinct. Unless some new technology comes along. No. Well, there's, there could be an upscale of the standard definition picture, but then mm. to some degree, what's the point? Mm. Uh, anyway, very sad, but we're still working on that Space Precinct uh, DVD set uh, idea, so let's see what happens there. Yes, yeah, so James Pilsen Wood, it looks like, has already gone to uh, the uh, iTunes and uh, had a listen to our podcast because he <laughs> loves the theme tune. He Just says. desperate to take a break from us here. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yeah. the, the theme is brilliant. Yeah. Um, I thought I might try and line it up on here, possibly. No, that's probably not going to work. No. Anyway, you can you can definitely hear it. Go go and find it later. Yeah, on. But maybe not yet. Maybe just stick around for a little bit longer. Yeah, no, keep watching because we've got other stuff. And yeah, other, yeah, other news. Oh yeah. Should we do some merch news now? Yeah, let's do merch. Let's do some merch, merch news. Now, there was a mention of the hoodies earlier on. Yes. Our amazing set of five four three two one Thunderbirds hoodies. Yes. And uh, here is a keen collector. Now, who could that be? <laughs> what a what a lovely family picture that is. That I know. Family God, I mean the uh, uh, sex tuplets. There. Can you imagine um, six Andrew Clements? Poor his poor mother. Can you imagine? Uh, yes. Anyway, so there's, uh, you know, <laughs> six of him there. One's 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 never enough when it comes to no, Andrew Clements. No, indeed. So AC, thank you for that lovely uh, picture. If anybody else has got photos themselves in their multiple Thunderbirds hoodies, please do send them. Yeah. Today it feels like an awful day to be talking about. It really does. Hoodies. It's sweltering, isn't it? It's still sweltering. It's so so warm. Uh, now there, did, there was a message flashed by. I didn't um, afraid catch who it was from. We were talking about cigarettes and UFO. Mm. Uh, a conversation sparked by Adrian, uh, and someone said, "Well, how about re- retrofitting cigarettes into other Anderson shows? Into Anderson shows?" He said he can't recall seeing any cigarettes in Lavender Castle. For example, yeah. Well, you know, that's a maybe. lovely idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that would be easier to do than uh, Space Precinct Blu-ray. Unfortunately. Indeed. Uh, and we also have to say, by the way, happy birthday to Kevin Goodman. Happy birthday, Don't Kevin we? Goodman. Because it's his birthday. Twenty-one today. Again, yes. Yeah. Happy birthday, Kevin. <laughs> Great. Uh, if we're going on to more summary merchandise, yeah. Then we do have a couple of new pre-orders that have launched to the Jerry Anderson store. <clears throat> an international rescue baseball cap. Nice. I tried to say international rescue there. I don't yeah, think I no, said it. You got pretty close. Mm, very close indeed. <laughs> close enough. Uh, which is rather nice. And uh, a Moonbase Alpha uh, baseball cap as yeah, well. Great. Much more summary. Yeah. Um, and uh, is that it? Dominic for Riley says it's news? raining in Newcastle. Good. Oh, well, there you go. Perfect Good. weather for a hoodie or a coat. Or maybe yeah. we should do some umbrellas. I don't know. Now, that alpha, the Moonbase Alpha, though, it should really have been a detachable peak, shouldn't it? That could have drifted away. I know it was pretty poor. Poor. I know. Nice try, though. I'm sorry. Uh, should we? Uh, yeah, I think we ought to move on. Yeah. Uh, also, in other news, in other news, uh, you may notice that quite often Jerry Anderson questions feature in quiz shows, and Richard and some others pointed out to me that it had recently featured in The Chase. One of my favourite programmes. Yes. With um, Bradley Walsh. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well done. I only remember because there's that thing of him laughing at, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that rude question. Yeah. Anyway, did you see the Joe 90 question on the chase? No? Well, <laughs> here, here it, it is. is. But can you answer it? In the Jerry Anson show Joe 90, what's the name of the device which gives Joe his knowledge? A, big rat, B, giant mouse, or C, huge beaver? Well, I think we'll know the answer to that, don't we? <laughs> well, it's I, I, obviously It's obviously C, C isn't it? Yeah, obviously. yeah, everyone knew that. Yeah, uh, anyway, yeah. so it's always really nice to see that <laughs> sort of stuff entering, uh, uh, you know, popular um, stuff. Jen Whitby, it's not A, it's obviously C, we all know yeah, that. we know it's C. Steve Bushel, it's not A, it's C. What is wrong with everyone? Yes, Big Rat says, uh, Mark Simpson, which says A. I know. It's not A, it's Crazy. C, it's Huge Beaver. Yeah. Everyone knows yeah. that. Yeah, and it, you know, are there, you remember the acronym for it as well, obviously. What, Huge Beaver? Yeah. Go on. It's a uh, heuristic user generated uh, encephalographic yes um, and then I can't remember not even halfway there yet oh come on that was a great start (laughs) (sighs) anyway yes no obviously it was Big Rat yes talking to Big Rat we should give a plug to Chris Dale who'll be on a little bit later with his usual uh, monthly Big Rat Bites 
he was, <laughs> yes. Okay. Plug, plug, plug. Chris yeah. Dale. Chris uh, Dale, at Chris Dale. Dalek on uh, Twitter yeah. and um, probably the same on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, so probably. Please go and find Chris. He's also contributing um, to the podcast. Yes, he is. He really um, is. Uh... With a new section. Shall we say what that is as an exclusive? Go on, then. It's called the Randomizer. Yeah. Where he is ran- oh, no, no, just leave it that. randomly Don't... assigned something. Ah, there you go. <laughs> See what, what could that be? Brain impulse galvanoscope record and transfer. And that doesn't spell huge beaver. No. I know. It's almost like people aren't playing along. <laughs> I you? know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that is actually the end of the, the news. Oh, is that it? Oh, right. Okay. Thank goodness. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I just would like to reiterate that, you know, we're putting a huge <coughs> amount of effort into this new uh, podcast. Yeah. Ooh, there it is. Look at that. Amazing. So, Who designed that? Uh, Chris Thompson, oh, obviously. Course, Chris does everything. Yeah, that's lovely. So, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, <clears throat> uh, Google Play, something or other. It's everywhere. So, uh, oh no, I've done. I've pressed the wrong button. Um, so, please. It's going well, isn't it? <laughs> please subscribe. And uh, you can hear our prequel episode now. We're not officially launching, but please do subscribe, rate and review. It will be very, very helpful and um, yeah. make sure more people can find us. So Indeed. thank you. Indeed. Great. Um, should we move on? Should we, where are we going now? I think it's technically time, time for, for another chocolate. chocolate. And while we eat chocolates, yes. it's time for Big Rat Bites. Aha. Uh, a new episode from uh, the lovely Chris Dale. So here we go. When I was a kid, I didn't really have much of a Jerry Anderson home video library. I think I only had like three, maybe four store-bought tapes, if that. But one of them, on the inside back cover, had all of the Jerry Anderson videos that I think it was Polygram Video at the time had available. I would stare at this list and think, well, if I could own just one of these tapes, which one would it be? Which story would I want to, to keep to own forever? Of course, little did I know, little did any of us know, that within 15 years of that, we would pretty much have everything there was to have available. And yet, now, not only do I have everything on a mix of DVD and Blu-ray in some cases as well, I also have this. This is a one terabyte hard drive. This has everything on it, Jerry Anderson related, from Twizzle right the way through to New Captain Scarlet. When I'm looking through the lists of episodes and bits and bobs that I have on here, it kind of makes me nostalgic for which episodes I saw first in each series. So uh, today, on Big Rat Bites, I am going to tell you the first episode of each series, each of the Jerry Anderson series, that I saw first time round. My first experience of Twizzle. No surprise to anybody to say that it's Twizzle and Footso, because sadly at this time, that's the only episode known to be in existence. Until now. This is a missing episode of Twizzle. Uh, no, it's not. It's really not. This is, um... I don't know. I should probably return this to ITV. Torchy the Battery Boy. Yes, in the very early 2000s, a bit of an online tape trading community sprang up for the Jerry Anderson shows. And there was a tape during the rounds at the time. I think it would have just been called an Anderson Rarities tape. It had the first episode of Twizzle, few episodes of Torchy, Four Feather Falls, The Investigator, various adverts and such. So um, the first episode I saw was the first episode of the show, Pom Pom and the Toys. And 20 years later, it still hasn't lost any of its power to shock and terrify. Four Feather Falls, again, this is on the Anderson Rarities tape. There were three on there, uh, Kidnapped, A Little Bit of Luck, and First Train Through. So Kidnapped was the first one I ever saw, which, um, has a nice recap of the first episode on the front anyway, and it was just a lovely introduction to a series that uh, I think is really underrated. Yeah, I really like Four for the Falls. Supercar. Oddly enough, I land right in the middle of Supercar, the episode that is precisely in the middle of the 39 episodes. It's episode 20, The Sunken Temple. Again, that was through the, the tape trading network. Somebody copied me The Sunken Temple and Trapped in the Depths. So the first episode was The Sunken Temple, which I don't really remember much about. Uh, there was a temple, it's sunken. David Graham was playing a, a very cheerful explorer, and I do remember one of the last scenes, he's broken his ankle, or twisted his leg. Anyway, um, and Mitch is bandaging his, his leg, and he's just smashing the broken leg against the ground. This guy doesn't care. Mitch is kind of a git. 
Fireball XL5, Christmas Morning, 1993. May have been 1994. Anyway, Father Christmas brought me Fireball XL5 Volume 4 on VHS, which had Space Pirates, Convict in Space, Space Pen, and Last of the Xanadus on it. It was such a thrill to get hold of this tape, something that wasn't on TV, it wasn't current, none of my friends knew what it was, I felt like I was in, in on a little secret part of the Jerry Anderson world that only I knew about, and I watched that tape over and over again. I don't have the tape anymore, unfortunately, I, I think I gave it away to a, a care home at some point, I hope they enjoyed it, but uh, part of me does still wish I, I had that tape still, because a uh, huge amount of nostalgia for that. That was one of the uh, one of the best presents I ever had. Stingray. For some reason, I think I was probably on holiday. I missed the first few episodes of Stingray on the BBC, BBC Two. Um, so the first one I saw was Hostages of the Deep, which is uh, an okay one to start off with. Yeah, pretty pretty bog standard Stingray stuff. I was fairly impressed. I remember uh, even at the time though the toy fish stuff. No, not funny at all. Thunderbirds, a nice easy one. The BBC Two repeats, September 1991, Trapped in the Sky. What can you say about Trapped in the Sky? It changed my life, and without going into any more detail, I think it probably changed the lives of a lot of people watching this today. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. Again, BBC Two, first episode I ever saw was the Mysterons. If you've ever seen the Mysterons, you know it's one of the greatest things with Jerry Anderson name on. It was so spectacular at an age, whatever I would have been at the time, eight. And even today, it's still stunning. Joe 90, most special astronaut. Again, this is on um, the BBC, but this time it was on BBC One, Saturday mornings but it went out with no promotion, no trails, nothing like the, the other shows had done on BBC Two, so I didn't actually know that it was running until I was at my nan's house the Saturday morning that um, Most Special Agent had gone out, and I noticed it was the pick of the day in one of the newspaper TV mags. I was thinking, oh no, missed it. But uh, yeah, I was up bright and early for Most Special Astronaut the following week, really enjoyed it, and I think I was up every Saturday morning for uh, next 28 weeks, The Secret Service. Back to the tape trading thing, somebody made me a tape of all 13 episodes on one tape. Yes, the first episode was obviously A Case for the Bishop, first episode. It was an experience, I'm not gonna lie, it was an experience. And um, I still have a soft spot for The Secret Service, despite the fact that it is utterly insane. UFO. Back to BBC Two, it repeats from I think 1996. But the first episode I saw was Identified, even though today I look at Identified and think it's a bit slow, it's a bit dull, not much happens at the time. I was hooked straight away and I still am. The Protectors, 2001, maybe 2002. Uh, Granada Plus were repeating The Protectors in double bills, Saturday mornings at 11am and if I was awake by then, which I wasn't always, I, I was up in time to see that first double bill on Granada Plus, 2,000 Feet to Die. It didn't make any more sense to me then than it does now. Good show, but uh, not the best episode to open with. Space 1999. Again, back to BBC Two. The first episode, first full complete episode I ever saw was Breakaway on there. Loved it from the start, still love it now. But actually, the very my very first exposure to Space 1999 was the compilation movie, Destination Moonbase Alpha, which my mum rented from the library. It was kind of kind of odd going from Destination Moonbase Alpha to Breakaway, thinking had I had I dreamt the differences in series two that were there in Destination Moonbase Alpha, because I couldn't I couldn't reconcile the two, and then it wasn't until the BBC eventually got around to showing the second series that I realised uh, these are two vastly different shows. But um, yeah, Breakaway is a good one to start with. Destination Moonbase Alpha, surprisingly, is probably the best of the compilation films because it was a two-parter. They do, they do work very well together, and uh, yeah, nostalgia for both there. Terror Hawks. So the first episode I saw was Expect the Unexpected Part One. Expect the Unexpected is not the greatest episode to start with. It, um, I think, the problem with a lot of the early Terror Hawks episodes is they are very slow. They do take themselves very seriously. But then around episode 10 or 11, something happens. Tony Barwick's brain just explodes and in comes the psychic teddy bear and, and all the rest of it. And uh, it just goes completely off the wall. As an opener, wasn't the, the greatest, but um, it's still terrible because it's still good. 
Dick Spanner, a game, the tape trading network, the compilation of the very first story, I should say, which I think is the case of the human cannonball. Much like the Secret Service, very different kind of production to, to the traditional Anderson Fair, but uh, still very enjoyable. Space Precinct, another easy one. BBC Two, Monday nights, 1995. The BBC order started Protect and Survive, the Snake, Time to Kill, Predator and Prey, and the rest of them. Uh, but Protect and Survive is a, a decent opening episode. It has a few problems that the early episodes did have, but uh, all in all, I think it's a stronger, stronger opening than uh, the other episodes that were produced earlier in the run. Lavender Castle. I don't remember. Because Lavender Castle was being shown when I was coming home from school. I was never home in time to see any of it go out, except one episode, because I remember Jerry Anderson being on CITV, being interviewed. So if anybody remembers what episode it would have been that he was interviewed after, because I do not remember. I have the DVDs. I have seen the first episode. Um, it's a very nice looking show. New Captain Scarlet. Yeah, like most of you, I was uh, up every morning to sit through the Ministry of Mayhem. A delightful show, which was the only way you could get to see New Captain Scarlet, and it was a jewel in the uh, the crown of crap that was uh, Ministry of Mayhem. Again, much like with Terrorhawks, the opening two-parter is not the greatest. It did get much better by the end. Oh my god, that show was so good! So that about wraps it up for this week's episode of Big Rat Bites. Uh, what were your first episodes of the, uh, the various Jerry Anderson shows? If you'd like to Drop us a line, let us know. Maybe you're replying in the comments below here. Maybe I've already been cut off. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I should... Uh, you know, I should probably look at um, returning this to ITV because I suspect they're going to need this at some point. But, uh, you know, it's lunchtime. I'll do it later. Um, you guys, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Chris, we love Chris. Don't. Will you stop that? What? Now, while you've been away, Chris, thank you very much for that. Always brilliant, Chris. I'm so lovely to see so many people commenting under that uh, video about their first experiences of uh, Jerry Anderson shows too. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, now, while, while Chris was uh, telling us about that and how we remember that, I've got no idea. I have given Richard one, literally. Yes. Uh, I've bought him a present. Yes. You have? Yes. And do you want to show them what it is? Look what I got. Richard's got an inflatable Thunderbird one. Not very own inflatable. It's just what I always wanted. Now, but bear in mind <clears throat> that Chris's contribution there was ten minutes long. Yeah. Richard still hasn't managed to blow this up. Yeah, I haven't got much so, puff, I must say. But uh, no, you carry on, and I'll um, see how far I get. Yeah, okay. You don't need me anymore, do you? Uh, I can't remember to be honest. Anyway, um, do tell us your <laughs> your first Anderson. Memory, the first time you watched a Jerry yes. Anderson show. I would love to love to read through those. Um, my first one was actually Terror Hawks Expect the Unexpected. Was it? Yeah, which we had on VHS. Ah. And uh, at the same time around the house, we we had uh, yes. it's disconcerting that. Right. Um, we had the original wooden mould for the cubes and for <clears> Hudson <throat> and a few other like, interesting bits and pieces of Terror Hawks paraphernalia around the house. So that was quite cool. Great. I, I don't remember a specific first episode. I do remember uh, the um, oh, Space 1999. Was it uh, Maya, the, uh, the shape changer? Mm. I remember uh, focusing in on the eye and then... Yeah, so uh, the titles. So I, so I, I, yeah, but I can't remember a specific thing. A yeah. specific well, I, that's why it's even more impressive. Uh, yes, indeed. You didn't have the original film version, Jamie? No, no, but I think probably by that point, uh, AC, the, uh, the film material had already been junked, unfortunately. So. Uh, Jamie... What? Someone's just mentioned that those inflatable Thunderbird ones are going cheap in TK Maxx. Well, I didn't get it from TK Maxx, did I? Because it was delivered to your blooming door. Hmm. Try to get me into trouble, you lot. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. But thanks, Chris. Very good. And we have some other news from uh, Chris Dale, don't we? Things that he has um, obligingly provided for Which you. Which I should have put in the news section, yes. Yeah. So Chris has done a lovely piece recently. Um, so he, we, he, he came up with this fantastic idea for uh, a web series uh, called Beyond Anderson, which is 
uh, exploring the wider careers of some famous Anderson names. And we launched the opening episode about Ed Bishop, who some of you may know better as Commander Ed Straker Indeed. or as Captain Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, we launched that last weekend. Um, and it's had thousands and thousands of views and loads of lovely comments. People have really enjoyed it. And, I, and it's one of those things where I had a really, really busy day when Chris sent me over the draft version. And I thought, I, I'll, I'll watch it and see how we go. And uh, I was kind of distracted. But within uh, two minutes, yeah. I was completely focused on it because it's a brilliant telling of Ed's career and stuff that I had no idea about. Yeah. Uh, next weekend, this weekend coming, we're launching episode two. And I'm hoping Chris will be able to put some more together for us. So, uh, yes, do go and watch that. Not now. No, obviously later. not now. Um, yeah, just, just search Beyond Anderson, Ed Bishop on YouTube or go on the Jerry Anderson website yeah. and expect a slow low time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting. So you're saying that some Jerry Anderson actors have careers after gosh. Yeah. I mean it's not all of them. Yeah, right. There's a thought. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> oh hey. we know that uh, a certain Olivier nominated Richard oh, no, James no, 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 I really don't like has, to mention has that. had a, a very successful theatre career very don't recently. Like so yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Anyway, the Ed Bishop video is wonderful. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Says Andrew Clements. Absolutely, you absolutely yeah. must. Yeah, please. lots of lovely work from Chris. Day, now very good. we've had a lot of emails, <clears throat> haven't we? And we can't manage to do them all because we'd be here until tomorrow. Yes, true. But should we do a selection? Got some questions first of all. Okay. Do questions first. Yes, we can do questions. Duncan Moss sent us an email very late in the day, but uh, luckily I caught it. Duncan asks, "Is there any more news on the Christmas Miracle, and also any future for uh, the Gemini Force One book series?" What do we think about that? So tell us, Christmas Miracle, what's that all about? What is it? Christmas Miracle is a, a sci-fi animated feature that Dad wrote in around 2007. And uh, yes, it has been revived and we've worked the script script up again and uh, it has some significant interest. And as with all these large things, it takes a very long time to get everything in place, but it's in a very good position currently ah. so um yes so alive and well certainly. Uh, very much alive and very well indeed great uh but uh no I, I would hate to put any of course solid news out there until we have something signed and sealed but uh yeah making uh, i think we progress. all appreciate that getting stuff like this made is an absolute pain in the bum it is yes and takes a long long time and uh you just need the right people at the right desk with the right amount of money yeah <laughs> that's true and don't that... look at me well, you're not sat at a desk, so yeah, you're safe. Yeah. Uh, but, you yeah, know, it's it's uh, it's tough. But we're getting there. Andrew Sierra says, why were these Super Mario Nation shows never nominated for any awards? Oh, they were in their time. Yeah. But the award ceremonies and stuff, as they exist now, weren't the same. Sure. But certainly, um, Thunderbirds got, uh, I think, uh, I want to say a gold medal for outstanding contribution to TV entertainment in 1965 or 6. Mm-hmm. Lots and lots of uh, mm. awards like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dominic John Riley. Yes. Any news on Firestorm? Yeah. Well. Uh, mm. Well. Did you you've seen something Firestormy yeah, recently? I, haven't I, you? I'm not sure I'm even allowed to talk about it. No, but you can talk about your reaction to it. All right. Here's my reaction to uh, to what I saw. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Brilliant. And now everyone's eardrums have burst. <laughs> yeah. So no, we we're um. Yeah. We're doing all right there. Yeah, doing all right with Firestorm. Yeah. Yes. You can if you're a backer, you can look forward to seeing. Some very exciting things very shortly, and if you're not, then well, hopefully not in the not too distant future. Sure, actually, indeed. Yes. Um, and uh, secondly, Duncan asked about Gemini Force One books. Any oh, yes. plans for any more of those in the series? Uh, uh, no more plans for any more books <laughs> currently, but uh, something like that is never dead. Yeah, there's always a future for it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's there's stuff waiting in the wings. It's so difficult not being able to say stuff. Oh, I, there's yeah. quite often that we do something and I really want to just tell all of you, like, oh, we've got yeah. some news, it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's things bubbling in the background for Gemini Force One. Yeah. Uh, Thunderbirds Beyond the Horizon, asks um, Mark Simpson Wedge. Well, Mark, we don't know any more than you do currently. That's the um, big live theatrical extravaganza. It is, yes. Um, yeah, we know, we know nothing more than we've already put out on the website. Uh, what I'm trying to do is arrange an interview with Richard Lewis who is the boss man at Limelight, who are doing the theatrical production, and Richard, I think, is writing and directing it. So if we get him on the podcast, then you will know a lot more. And so will I. But currently we know nothing. Yeah, someone just asked um, about... I don't know, it's gone. 
I can scroll back up. Oh, so there's so quite an interesting one just there. Joanne Bennett says GF1 audios would be awesome. Uh, well, yeah. So I'm, uh, yeah, so rather like the Terror Hawks um, box sets. Yeah. Imagine if there well, were. Maybe that's GF1 there somewhere audios. in the background. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, great. Good. Uh, another question for you uh, from Robert, Rob Cassidy. Uh, now, uh, yeah, that, you have to sit on that, so we can't say that. Um, great. Okay, I won't ask that then. Uh, however, <laughs> Ashley Bell says, Hi, Richard. How are you? Says Ashley. Uh, I have something to tell you. He Didn't says. ask me. No. Thanks, I Ashley. found, and this is big news, I found another Jerry Anderson fan. Just one. <laughs> Great. No, he said his name is Robert Sweeney. Can you give him a shout out, please, for June the 11th while you're doing Fab Live? Robert seen Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, Joe 90, Space 1999, Space Precinct. I've been friends for 20 years. Oh, uh, brilliant. And hello. He would just like me to say hello, to me, to say oh, hello sorry. to Robert Sweeney. Hello, Robert. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, that's sort of it on the questions. And then we've had lots of. I must tell you about um, the high cues from Andrew Clements. I don't know why this has become a thing now, but people are saying. <laughs> I'm us... so pleased it has become a thing. <laughs> yes, people are saying it's Jerry Anderson high cues, which is uh, three lines. It's a form of. Is it poetry? I mean, it's Japanese poetry. Yeah, yeah far, um, three five, lines, five, five seven five. Five syllables. syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. Uh, I'm new to high cue, but I thought I'd give him a try. So here goes nothing. Oh, is, nice, very clever. Uh, and the rest are Anderson based. Uh, here's Father Unwin. His mission is most secret. Come along, Matthew. That's lovely. Captain Black no more. Now a Mr. On Agent. His soul in turmoil. Ooh. It's and finally, deep. isn't it? Andrew. Uh, mighty fire flash soars. Wings tearing the clear blue sky. Beware the landing. <laughs> Good, isn't it? They're great. We must publish these. Well. Well, subject to uh, yes. author approval, obviously. <laughs> Quite right, too. Uh, though they're great. I yeah. love those. Yeah. Uh, and then we've just got lots and lots of photographs that people have very kindly been sending us over the yeah. last six or eight I, weeks. I, I've just backed to that, so I feel like we're onto something. You know they did that, um, and now we are 600. They did, the Doctor, Doctor Who, Who one. poetry thing. I wonder if we could do an Anderson poetry thing. Anyway, right. do keep sending your uh, Jerry Anderson haikus to fablive at jerryanderson.co.uk. Yes, that's the first time I've mentioned the email all evening, and, isn't it? And to podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk, oh, right. because we might maybe yeah. read the best ones of the podcast yeah, as well. Yeah, quite right. That's great, yeah. Anyway, should we do some pickies? Yes, let's see what pictures we have. Well, you have to prompt it, and I'll put Well, the right you put them up. up, and I'll see what, what you've got. Uh, I've got something from Matt. Matt. See, this is why it's better if you lead. <laughs> Can we start with Roger Woolley's NEC Collector Mania Absolutely, pictures? yes. Here's Roger uh, with a group of uh, cosplayers. Yes, there they are. He says, thought you'd like to see a few of the photos uh, that were taken at the NEC. It was a fantastic show. Had over 30 requests for photographs in these costumes, I can imagine. And I know the other members of the C21 group were just as busy. Bless them. Yeah, that's look great, amazing. Great to see. Yeah. I just, I love the fact that this stuff is still out there. Yes. Because of these amazing dedicated fans yeah. who put these costumes together and yeah. and go into these very hot environments absolutely uh so yes well done chaps ralph titterson says, says plug the uh, plug the new cd chaps. we're plugging the new cd in a minute ralph hang on <laughs> we'll get there and another shot i believe of um roger did we not get the absolutely there. with one uh, mr That's a him. tracy yes indeed right there uh, right. holding what is that is that the page some... from a is that Lee Sullivan artwork? I uh, can't tell. Could be. It's too small. But uh, yeah, lovely. Could be. Always good to see Matt. He is very a very cheery, cheeky chappy. Yes. Isn't he? Yes, he is. Can't help himself. Bless him. He can't help that. himself, did you say? Yeah. Right. Being cheeky. I see. Yes. And cheery. And che cheeky and cheery. Right. Who, who else is up? Okay, now we've got uh, Andrew Minnie. Uh, now yes. he says, uh, he's, he sent us a photograph of his, of his rescued supercar. Of his dirty old toy. That's right. <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> I bought it at an antiques market, he said, and had this feeling it was supercar. It is, in fact, a budgie model, and I got it minus antennae, canopy, and Mike Mercury figure. One wing was broken, and I got a replacement from eBay, as well as all the other bits. Very good. Uh, he became interested in supercar when looking at the design register and representations at the National Archives. He found some photos of supercar and some of the puppets. Uh, he's found many models of supercar online and one on a stand. However, they're all in three figures and rather... Uh, on, uh, yes. Yeah, I don't want that. No, absolutely. It's too expensive. But the other weekend at a toy fair at Kempton Park, I found a stall with two of these models, one in red and one in grey, at very reasonable prices. Oh, so there's the grubby <coughs> toy. Yes. But he's done a lovely restoration job, yes. there, hasn't he? And there he is restored in all its glory. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. It does it lovely. Well done, Andrew. Fantastic. Yes, we approve. 
Absolutely. Uh, yes, says Scott, it is Lee's art. You were asking about oh, Lee's good. art. Yes. Um, and then we've got, uh, well, we've got Scott uh, with his na- uh, uh, new Captain Scarlet soundtrack. Yes, uh, where is CD. Scott on my list? Here he is. And there he is, holding it. Yes, yeah, so there you go. So <laughs> here is the plug for yes. a new Captain Scarlet soundtrack. Yeah. There you go. Amazing. Uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> set with music from all the episodes, a 2018 suite, uh, a lovely... Um, Fireside chat with me and Crispin Morell. Oh, that sounds of, delightful. Yeah, no, it, it was. It's really interesting. It was really interesting for me learning about the process of putting that music together yeah. and uh, yeah, how yeah. how Crispin got on with Dad uh, during that process. Yes, so, quite a long uh, working relationship. Was Space Precinct his first theme? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And Lavender Castle. Did you do that? Yes, all? indeed. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. All those latter shows. Yeah, great. And uh, Crispin's still done some bits and pieces for us now. I mean, he must have been a boy when Space Precinct was. Here. He did look very young, but he still looks very young now. I know, he's one of those annoying One of those people. never ages. Yeah. Ugh, hate yeah. them. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, uh, there are a couple of signed copies left on the Jerry Anderson store, actually, if you'd like. One of the last two or three, I think, that are there. Great. Excellent. So grab one of those. It's a lovely set. Is there anything planned for another Je- uh, Thunderbirds Day, says Jen Whitby? Uh, International Thunderbirds Day will be this September. Ah. Waiting for official dates and other bits and pieces. Great. I think it depends whether the official 50... Second anniversary falls on a Saturday or not. Oh, but see. anyway, yes, it'll be late September. Shirley Burton says, Sorry I'm so late, I forgot all about it. Well, nice well, to be remembered. The, the, all the fantastic news she's missed. Oh, Shirley. Oh, my God, and the special effects that we've introduced at the beginning of the show. And, our and the special, dancers. Yeah, the dancers, the special guest. I mean, extraordinary. Oh, you missed a lot, Shirley. How wonderful to have uh, Sean Connery with us earlier. He was I know. A great guest. Fl- flying in. Yeah, and live par- in the helicopter. Sailing, parasailing through so, the... So, Shirley, um, I'm sorry you missed that. Parasailing through the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hope you'll pay for that for Indeed. a glass. Uh, and finally, do you have... Uh, um, I was tweeted at Richard J. Hang Richard on, we've James. got more than finally... Because we've got um, okay uh, Graham's uh, biker jacket. Yes, okay. Haven't we? Yeah, what, well, do you want to show that first? Yeah, I'm going to show you that. Look at that. Look at it. Lovely collection of badges there. Yeah. How many can you name? Well, I can see the Space Precinct 88 badge up there. Well, that's all you need, isn't it? That's all you need. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're obviously Spectrum. A Spectrum yeah. Koala training base variant. What's Wasp the, badge. What's the Jebs? I don't actually ah, know. At the um, very top there. Junkyard Spaceship Pass. It's not all Anderson, uh-huh. because there's a Nuka Cola uh, oh, okay. badge there, which is from, uh, of course, Fallout, the game. Of course it is. Which you would know. But there's a Win badge there, a Zero X patch. I mean, he's got all sorts there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Peter Bruce says the pyrotechnics at the start of the show were amazing. Surely missed a hell of a show. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. The pyrotechnics were great. The firework display is amazing, yeah. wasn't it? So thank you. Glad you appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also... Uh, there's another thing, I'm sure, which I now can't find. Right. Matt uh, Stodden. Okay. I, I'm worried to show what the picture is now because you don't have a note of it. Matt Stodden. I do. That rings uh, a bell. Oh, it's the, it's the yes. Thunderbird 3 there thing at Humberside Airport. Yeah, yeah. Now, does anybody know the history of this? Because I know nothing about it. It's very clearly a Thunderbird 3. But why is it there? Who built it? What, who's it by? What, what's the history? At what, what airport? Humberside. Humberside. I'm airport. sure it's Humberside. Mm. Is it Humberside? It's Humberside. Mm. Anyway, has anybody seen it? Mm. Um, I didn't know it was there. Yeah. But it's a lovely thing that's, that, that it is there, but yeah. we just know nothing about it. Big, isn't it? It is big. But that took a while to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, Ooh. you better get back to work. <laughs> yeah, I think I um, want to. So if you know about the Thunderbird 3 at Humberside and why it's there and where it came from and all that sort of stuff, then please email us. Uh, it doesn't have to be in haiku form, but if it is, then great. Well, all the better. Podcast at, yeah. not podcast at. Oh, no, no, Fab Live. You see, Fab Live at jerryanderson.co.uk. Fab Live at. That's see, right. Shirley, you don't know why I'm saying podcast at. Yeah, no, I yeah. do. Uh, promotion for the Thunderbirds film, says Steve Bushel. Really? Oh, really? I mean, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Oh, I feel like we should take the picture down. <laughs> oh, steadily. And have you also got um, the, uh, we had uh, an email from Dennis Fernandez from the USA. Yes. He says he loves our monthly broadcasts. Well, <laughs> Very easily pleased. Uh, I previously sent uh, several photos of my Anderson memorabilia collection and you were kind enough to show one in uh, Fab Live episode 10. And here's one more. Ta-da! Ta-da! There it is. Look at that. Now, are those the porcelain dolls? Because they creep me out slightly, I have to uh-huh. say. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a lovely collection there. Yeah. Although I can see also 2004 f- uh, um, Fab 1 yeah. in there. So, um, yeah. yes. Lots of people saying that that... Um, Thunderbird 3 was indeed the uh, to publicise the 2004 oh, film. film. Goodness me. Uh, glad we brought it up now. Oh, I wish I'd never said it. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Shall I, shall I say about that? Here it is now. 
I didn't know. I didn't know it made still noise. Still talking. Yeah, yeah. How did I do that? You press oh, the... There's a button there. Thunderbird three, three to base. Amazing. I, I, yeah, one of the talking ones. Lovely. I don't know if that's... Is that worth anything? Uh, probably. Does anybody right. want this? No! We'll just give it away. 30p to the first bidder. Oh, dear. Um, shall I mention the, the, the about the podcast and the relation to that film? Uh, the person? Oh, yes. Should we do that now? Yes. Exclusive news. Yeah, come on then. For the Jerry Anson podcast in the first three episodes, one of our special interviewee guests will be Sophia Miles. Yes, Sophia Miles. Who played Lady Penelope in the 2004 film, and she will be spilling the beans. <laughs> oh, she? On the production, what they thought of it at the time, her reflections on it now. Um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting chat. Mm. But she's a lovely, lovely lady. Great. Um, um, and she's, she's taken a couple of years off to have a, a kitty. Mm-hmm. Um, and now she's back working, doing all sorts of stuff. But Great. she's going to be speaking... A future guest very, on, on the podcast. Very candidly. In fact, I'm meeting her tomorrow to do the recording. Lovely. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, I think that's the first time she will have spoken about it like that. And um, I will be reminding her that she was supposed to come to Andercon 2015, but she bailed because of uh, childcare issues at the last really? minute. Really? Is that right? Yes. Oh, I'd like to... So there you go. Mm. So Fire Miles, that's another reason to subscribe to the podcast. Mm. And there are lots of other guests too who are very exciting, but mm. Sophia is a particularly unusual one. Lovely. Brilliant. Anyway, you've got more, a little, well, few more of your emails, and it's nearly eight o'clock already. I know, I know, I know. So Jim Cannon uh, tweeted me at Richard N. James on Twitter because he uh, picked up one of his um, son's little toy cars. This is a very niche tweet. It is. And uh, you'll see why he sent it to me. And he rotated it in his hand and had a look at the rear end of said vehicle. And he thought it rather <laughs> reminded him of uh, Brogan's uh, little space hopper from, uh, from Space Precinct. Can you see the resemblance there? Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. So if you take a look at this picture at the uh, at the top, where am I pointing? There. Yes. Look, there, for example. And then uh, here. And, yeah, that's right. You can see there is a resemblance. Now I think the hopper was actually modelled on a on a VW Beetle. It was. It? Yeah. Uh, but that is uh, yeah, that's pretty close. I, do you know what? I have to say, I never liked that design. Well, you can say that. No offence to the person that designed it, it just wasn't. I, yeah. No. I quite like the sound effects for it. Right. But not the design, bizarrely. I can't remember. It'd be great for a Space Precinct audio series. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, now you've been... Over to you, Nicholas Briggs. Yeah. You've been socialising quite a lot, haven't you? Oh, I have. I've been out and about. They've let me out occasionally, yes. Mm. Well, I bumped into a couple of people from the uh, Jerry Anderson universe and I took a, a selfie or two with them. thought you might like to see them. Well, so I was at a friend's house for a, a party, don't you know, uh, a couple of weekends ago. And who should I bump into but Terra Hawk's own... Zelda. Beth Chalmers. Oh, yes, Beth Chalmers. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Lovely Beth. Yeah she, was, yeah, she was in fine form and sent her love to you. Oh, bless her. Yeah. Send Beth Chalmers, back. whose work we uh, all admire, of course. She's a, a stalwart of Big Finish. And um, what did she play in, uh, in Terra Hawks? Uh, sister, Kate Kestrel, uh, Zero 35, and a bunch of other... Some yeah, characters. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, Moyd's daughter, Aurelia. Oh, God, I bet she was great at that. She was brilliant. I bet yeah. she was. Uh, and then just more recently, I was in Canterbury because I'm all over the place at the moment, all over the shop. Literally. And I bumped into uh, the aforementioned Chris Dale. There he is. And there we are sharing a cup of coffee. So if I'm out and about in your town, I might just grab a selfie. Uh, in fact, there's a whole new segment, isn't it? Yes. Let's have a selfie segment. Okay, with you. So if you catch me out and about, come and see me. I'm on tour at the moment. Or me. With, with uh, David Williams' awful auntie. Or, with, or Jamie, yes, if you see any of us anywhere, uh, grab a selfie and uh, we'll pop it on, on, the, on, on the next Fab Live. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, uh, well, we'll probably have more haikus than selfies. Yeah, of course we will. there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Because yeah. no, it's funny, occasionally, even just wandering around London, somebody will come up and go, oh, hello. Really? And it's really lovely, yeah. Doesn't happen yeah, to me. Just, oh, sorry. People are asking who this voice is. I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. It's not. not sure. It's not. A, it's not an original voice no, artist. It's um, probably just a generic um, VO. Anyway, Richard selfie segment. Yes, Dominic Riley likes the idea. Well, right. Let's okay, do it. Dominic, you have to track Richard down yeah. by next month. Come and find me. Uh, now, I'll just say quickly, we haven't planned the next date, but I can't do the one I think we should be doing. So while we're doing the blankety blank, I'm going to look up some dates, and we'll try and work this out before the end of the thing. <laughs> well, anyway, nice. yeah. is it time for a game? It's time for a game. Brilliant. I can see everyone's really excited as, as the viewing figures drop right off. Yay. So it's time for your everyone's second favourite Game of Fab Life. Yeah, I'll go for that. Yeah, maybe. Fair enough. It's uh, this appearing tonight on 
Virgil Tracy, Destiny Angel, Officer Orange, Atlanta Shaw, Captain Scarlet, and Dr. Venus. And here are your hosts, Richard James and Jamie Anderson. There we are. There we are. Now, come on. You're, you've... Help yourself. Now, bear in mind, I've had one of these. Yeah. Can you see how, em only have one. how empty the tray is? Well, you know. Where's the menu I'm card? I'm growing lad. You do this thing. Come on. Now. It's time for Blankety Blank. Anyway. Time for Blankety Blank. You know the score. Uh, I uh, give you some well-known, perhaps not quite so well-known quotes and phrases from uh, the various Jerry Anderson um, shows. It's up to you to fill in the blanks. You, you can tell me what show it's from and who said it. Even better. What have you got there? Carry on. Very helpfully, Chris mm. Dale, who seems to be all over this episode, mm. quite Can't right too. Him. Quite right too. He sent us. Uh, he sent me the, uh, this this month's um, blanky blanks. He sent me four, in fact, and I've chosen three, which I think are rather good. Here's the first. I say, open this door at once. We're what? Blank. Yeah. I say, open this door at once. We are what? So tell me, what is the missing word? Just the one blank there. Uh, tell me who said it, if you can. Mm. And the series and episode. And the series and the episode. Absolutely. And the time Bonus code. Point. That's right. Not the time code, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there will. I say, open this door at once, we are... Now, this seems to be quite a familiar one, because I can see lots of correct answers coming up. Yes, British says Steve Bushell, uh, Dominic Riley, British. Ross Patterson's given us the whole hog there. British, Sir Jeremy Hodge, and the perils of Penelope. Goodness me. British... Uh, eating chocolate, yeah. Yes. yeah. That would work, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, we are indeed eating chocolate. I'm just going to have one more, actually, before I stop. Now. So you're quite right, everybody. Uh, there we are. The word is British. And indeed it was from uh, Sir Jerry Hodge from the Thunderbirds episode, The Perils of Penelope. Oh, sorry. What are you doing sorry. now? It jumped out. Look, do I mess around like this when it's your turn? <laughs> oh, probably, yeah, fair enough. Uh, now we've got a little double whammy for you. Again from Chris. Mm. So see how you get on with this one. The only way you could look blank is to get a complete new blank. So I need two words there, two blanks. The only way you could look blank is to get a complete new blank. Aww. And again, if you can tell me who said it, uh, in which series, and indeed the episode, then that would be rather splendid. I was ahhing at Richard's cat, who's come yes. to visit, by the way. Just meowed in the corner. The only way you could look blank is to get a complete new Blank. And funnily enough, Richard insulted me using this phrase just earlier today. Didn't you? Did I? Yeah, when we mess up at the station. I can't remember. That's yeah, so long ago. so rude. Good and coat. The only way you could look good is to get a complete new coat. Or the only way you could look smart is <laughs> to, to get, get a complete new, new haircut. Out outfit, I was going to say. Ah. Uh, nice. Chris Honey is on it. Yeah. Kitty! No, the only way you could look kitty <laughs> is to get a complete new kitty. You, know, yeah. you need two no. words. Yes. Uh, so well done, Chris Honey. You are indeed right. It's good and face. The only way you could look good is to get a complete new face. Commander Shaw must have been very grumpy that day to say something like that. Uh, it's, yeah, it seems a bit unwarranted, yeah. doesn't it? Well, moody git. Yeah, so that's from Stingway, and that's the episode The uh, the Cool Caveman. Nice work, Dominic Riley. got that. Yeah, well done. And Will Farrell as well. Um, yeah. Very good. Could see the word head. So, like, well, yes, well, I'll give you a... This happens. Head start. Uh, now, so finally, yeah, our final break this. Blank. Now, oh, this yeah, no, a... it's got quite. Um, well, see, see okay, through, how about it? if I do that? Yeah, perfect. Now they'll never see it. <laughs> Just don't raise it any further. There you go. I've never. No. <laughs> I've never blank a blank before, but I've always had a blank for blank. Wow. Come on, there's four there to this get. This is the blankiest blank we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. The blankiest I, blank. I've never blanked a blank before. But I've always had an blank for blank. That's so complex, isn't it? It is. Four of them. Any ideas at all? Can you even name the series? Can you name the episode or who said it? Can you even think of four words? <laughs> I can't. Um, what about if I just do this? No! Don't... So... Hey? You could, could at least come up with a funny thing. <laughs> what? A funny guess... I've never fish a pie before. Fish pie. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> I've never blank a blank before, but I've always... Ross is stumped. Yeah. It's tough. Look at that. I've never flown a temple before, but I've always had an ear for music. Of course, now I've said it. 
Everybody knows where it's from now. Yeah, yeah, but in case they don't know where it's from. It's, it's Officer Haldane from Space Precinct. Uh, and that's, uh, I think it's uh, The Fire Within Part 2. It is. Well done. Well done, Chris Dale. It's when he goes up and presses some keys on the organ, isn't it? To I think take, that's right. To make the temple take off. I think that's right, yes. Yeah. I've never flown in a temple before. Uh, yes, good. Well done, Chris Dale, for getting everyone scratching their heads. <laughs> if we had a prize, you'd, I'd give it to you right now, because it was very good, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, there's always that uh, Thunderbird 3. Inflatable Thunderbird 1. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, you can get them cheap in... Uh, yeah, 2K Max, 2K Max yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. So, well done. That, well, that's this month's blankety blank out the way. Mm. That was all right, wasn't it? That was great. Well done, Chris. Well done, Richard. Yeah. And I got time for two chocolates, so that was great. Have you eaten two chocolates? Well, you had about five already. I haven't had like five. There you go. I've had six. <laughs> I'll have this one as well. I don't, I don't care. I don't want to look at the menu. I don't care. I quite want the Raspberry Ripple ice cream now uh, as well. I can have that. Now, you, these are supposed to be for you and Charlotte, not just for you well, and me. Well, but... you know, oh, well. you snooze, you lose. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, now normally we'd have a This Month in Jerry Anderson section, wouldn't we? Yeah. What's happened for that? Jamie, I've been very, very busy. <laughs> I'm on tour, two shows a day, up and down the country. Mm. Okay? I had a friend's birthday party yesterday I had a read through for a brand new project today mm. and um, I just didn't have the time I didn't have the time Yeah, I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen if I've let you down they don't mind no they're probably glad that we get to skip straight to their yeah. favourite bit of the show oh instead. we're going straight out of Fab and Fib well <clears throat> is there any other option no absolutely not so let's do oh no do you know what I've realised I've not done I've um, I've forgotten to load up one of the uh, images oh so, well, it's just going to come up with Fab or Fib, isn't it? So, anyway, it's time for... Go on, then. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, was it really worth the wait? It People are already joining in, look. Fib, Fib. I haven't <laughs> started yet. <laughs> just preempting it. Anyway, there you go. It's uh, straight from one game to another. Yes. Fab or Fib. So this is where I give you five... Uh, facts from the Jerry Anderson universe, uh, but only one of them is true. Only one of them is fab, yes. and four are fibs. So it's up to you to discern uh, which is the fab and which are fibs. And once you've shot your fab, you can't then use it again. So if you decide, for example, that number one or two is true, fab, you can't then say that number four, five, or three are also fab. No, you may fab no more. Indeed, there can be only one. Yeah. So, and I shall be keeping a close eye, which is why I'll be squinting. Excellent. Uh, on. On you. Uh, Keith Roberts, you've already spent your fab. Well, there we go. Oh, well, that's it. Yeah, you see? That's very premature. So uh, I must thank Mark Simpson Wedge who sent these in. So thank you yes, to him. Yes, thanks, Mark. Uh, they're quite tricky. They now, is, we just... often get complaints, don't we? People saying mm. it's too hard. Well, you ain't heard nothing yet. This is our trickiest ever fab yeah. or fib. Yeah, so hunker down and get, get, have, get your ears around this. Yeah. And the first fab or fib fact is this. Authors Richard Martin Stern and Thomas N. Scorcher both got the idea for their novels after watching their favourite Thunderbirds episode, City of Fire. As you can see, one wrote there The Towering Inferno and the other The Tower. But did they get that idea for their novels after watching the Thunderbirds episode, City of Fire? Fab or fib? Well, those dirty IP thieves. Yes, aren't they just? Yeah. If that is indeed fab. Well, obviously. It's not flop or flip, Dominic. Thank you. Fab or fib? What do we think? Is that true or false? If it's true, it's fab. If it's a lie, then it's fib. But remember, you can only use your fab once. A lot of people do get inspired by these things, don't they, though? Yes, so of course. It's perfectly feasible. Indeed. Lots of fibs, I'm afraid. Oh. Yeah, fib says Emma, fib says Harry, fib says Andrew, fib says Dominic. Crikey, not a single fab to be found. Well, don't forget, there's... Um, uh, we had that fab earlier on. Yeah, actually, one wrote The Glass Inferno and the other wrote The Tower, and it's a fib, says Andrew Clements. All well, right, smarty pants. Get him. Yeah. I don't know which Andrew Clements that was. It could be any one of the five. Uh, it was the one in the Thunderbird 5. <laughs> right, was it? He looked particularly snarky. The second fact for you to consider. Plans were made for a third Captain Scarlet film for the Super Space Theatre Project, but it was scrapped because the budget could only produce 13 films. The title would have been Mr. on Agent Captain Black and featured the episodes Manhunt, Operation Time, Spectrum Strikes Back and Double Cross. Fab or fib? Hmm. I mean, it certainly sounds like something they would have done. Does it? Yeah, I didn't really well, understand the question. The compil- <laughs> it's a lot of compilation movies to try and recycle the content ah, and do something new with them. Okay. Um, so that's certainly, yeah. Fab or fib? Where would you jump? Which side? Uh, well, I was, t- I was not 
I was fairly flummoxed by Mark's things. So um, yes, Dennis Neal yeah, says he's on the fence. Very tough. James Pilsen was his fib. No, fence is not. It's not fab fence or fib. <laughs> yeah, true. It's fab or fib. That's true. You got to jump one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, Double cross, no such episode, says Andrew Clements. Fib! I mean, he's really getting on his high horse, isn't he? He really is, yeah. Well, calm down. It's just a bit of fun. (laughs) Uh, Our third fact for you to consider. The coloured tape recorders from episodes of Captain Scarlet and Joe 90 uh, were reused for interior decoration of one of the shadow vehicles in UFO. Is that fab or fib? I mean, that's an interesting one, isn't it? It could be. What sort of size would you think that they would have been... Well, that's that's the thing I was thinking. Looking at the pictures, they're yeah. quite small. Could they so. then have been used in one of the shadow vehicles in Little UFO? Miniature ones. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Could oh. be fab. Could be fib. I don't know. Lots of people saying fib. Ashley Emma Nichols says fab. Rob Cassidy says, says fib. fib. There's quite a lot of fibs there. Gary Hodges. I remember, one of these is right. One of these is true. We're already up to number four, which is mm. coming up now. In the second series of Space 1999, Sandra had her name changed to Zahn. Because one of the American producers, who said that the show could come back if it was made more American, had a granddaughter of that name. And she was a huge sci-fi fan. Well, that... I, I mean, mean in, uh, interfering American producers is a, well, is a theme of um, yes. Space 1999 Season 2. So. Indeed. So it could be fib or fab, could be fab or fib. Fib, fab or fib. There's a quite a few fabs flowing through now. Yeah. Emma, I'm not... Have you had a fab yet, Emma? She said fib all the way, I think. Guy Snowden says fab. Paul Harris, fab. So was the name changed to appease an American producer because of his uh, his granddaughter? Well, we may have dropped out just then. Ah. We were uh, suffering from low bandwidth. Are we now? We are indeed. All right, well, I'll plough on. Number five. The camera the spy used to photograph the inside of the Zero X in Thunderbirds Argo was bought by the BBC and was modified to become the sonic screwdriver in Doctor Who. Is that true or false? Fab or fib? I wonder. Well, I would say... Fab. Mm. No. Fib. I, I, this is one where I'm fairly confident that it's, uh, it's a fib. I okay. know. But I I'm, I'm, could be wrong. Yeah, you could be wrong. Okay. So uh, should we have a little recap and hope that we're still being watched by people? Yeah, no, we are we're on and off. Our, our, yeah. our uh, upload speed is... Um, is it's, back to, it's back to good okay now. So right, we're good, right. we're good. Okay, right. so should we have a recap? Yeah, go on then. So have you got them all to flash up? I'm ready to flash. Go cool, on then. Uh, authors Richard Martin Stone, Thomas N. Scorcher, did they take their inspiration after watching Thunderbirds episode City of Fire, Fab or Fib? Uh, plans were made for a third Captain Scarlet film for Super Space Theatre Project, uh, Fab or Fib. Coloured red record tape recorders, rather, from the episodes of Captain Scarlet and Joe 90 were reused for interior decoration of one of the shadow vehicles in UFO, Fab or Fib. And in the second series of Space 1999, Zar- Sandra changed her name to Zahn because of one of the American producers, blah, blah, blah. And number five, the camera the spy used uh, to photograph the inside of the Zero X in Thunderbirds Ago was brought, bought by the BBC, modified from the sonic screwdriver, Fab or Fib. Well. There they all are. Can I eliminate one? Yes. That's the one I was confident about. It's number five, surely. Surely. Because it was actually the screwdriver in... Um, Oh, Thunderbirds 6? No, Thunderbirds... I, one of the films, I for some reason now, I can't remember which one. Yeah. Somebody will uh, point that out. But it was it was the Pertwee-era screwdriver. Was it? Yeah, yeah. It just, it just fitted the little uh, red and red ah, bit on top. And it I was didn't the know same that. thing. Yeah. Interesting, because uh, it first featured, of course, in a Patrick Trout story, didn't it? When it was just this really sort of with the thin bit of metal, wasn't it? Yeah. But like a pen. The per- yeah, in fact, maybe in that. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely... Death? Not the case. Right, anyway. Let's get rid of five. Let's move. Yeah, get rid of five, yes. Uh, I think we could also get rid of number one. Authors Richard Martin Stone and Thomas N. Scorcher, as far as we know, didn't take their inspiration from Thunderbirds no. episode Although 65. we may be corrected. Yeah. Chris Dale said it's a tough round, but he's going with three for fab. Mm. Andrew C.S. says two is fab. Well, is it two? No, it's not. Oh dear. No, plans were not made for a third Captain Scarlet film. So it's not that. So we're left with, is that number three and number four? Yeah, one of the two. Mm. So it's either the tape recorders being used again in the shadow vehicles in UFO uh, or the name change to appease an American producer's granddaughter. Well, it's number three. Ta-da! So well done, everybody who guessed that number three was Which is not many bad. of you. No, that's but, right. Like we said, it was a really tough round. Yes, it was. Do you want to see some proof? Yes, let's see the proof. Ta-da! There they are. Inside the shadow vehicle. So they were a pretty good size then. Yeah. You see them there? The little orange blocks down either side. It's definitely the same ones. But it's funny how the scale sort of works. Absolutely. Either way. Let's have a look at the previous picture again. There you go. Good, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see UFO again. <laughs> oh, really? 
Right, yeah. They're definitely yeah, the same. Definitely the same. Yeah. Well, well, well thank you. Well spotted, yeah, Mark. Yeah, yeah, well spotted, Mark Simpson Wedge, and thank you for, for sending those fabble fibs in. My work here is done. Beautifully done, Richard. Would you like another chocky? I'd love one as a reward for getting through that. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, there's only two to choose from now, as in two types. Yes. Well, I'll have one of each then. Okay, fine. Oh, you're going to put them both in at once? Yeah. Goodness me. Uh, so, uh, we hope you enjoyed that um, fabble fib. Is that the hardest one we've ever done? I think it might be. Oh, definitely. We'll get a complaint about that, certainly. No. No. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, whinging. Hmm. <laughs> Now we've got to speak. We should have done this, No, we? No, no. So, right. let me just say, if you want to send us some fab or fibs, if you want to send us some blankety blanks, uh, if you want to send us some email questions or show us some pictures of your cosplay or your toys uh, or your other merchandise that you may have, uh, do send them to fablive at jerryanderson.co.uk mm. and we will try our best to put them on uh, the next edition, which ah. is... Which is, would you say, the 9th of July? Mm. Monday the 9th of July. Monday the 9th, because we can't do the first one. Indeed. Um, so yes, put that date in your diary or yep. whatever you've got. Yeah, Monday the 9th of July. Yeah. <laughs> 7 o'clock. Yeah. And... Um, be there or be square. Yeah. In the meantime, by that point we will have mm. uh, launched the Jerry Anderson podcast. Mm. For those of you who uh, missed that bit of news, shall I try and show that image without breaking everything? You could try. Um, yeah, so if you flip back to news... Oh, here we go. Uh, Ta -da. Yes. There is to be a Jerry Anderson podcast, which will not replace Fab Live, but will be, in addition to Fab Live, presented by uh, me and, and me. Richard so, Jefferson. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, the same voices, uh, yeah. no visuals, which yeah. may be, be better. better for oh, a yeah. lot of you. Uh, yeah. We completely understand that. Yeah. Um, yes. So, uh, let me get rid of that. Um, It'll be on iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud and all normal big podcast providers. Mm -hmm. um, there is a prequel episode up already, mm -hmm. so please go mm -hmm. and listen to that. Subscribe, uh, rate and review, because although it's a prequel, it will really help us to get people to, to listen to it. And that's the name of the game, really, is to keep Dad's legacy alive by reaching more people. Yeah. And I'm sure lots of people will want to hear. And there, there's going to be some great interviews in there. Um, including voice artists, uh, screen actors, mm. um, behind-the-scenes folk, um, and also, as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, Sophia Miles, who played Lady Penelope in the 2004 Thunderbirds film. She will be one of our first three guests, and she's going to spill the beans about Great. the good, the bad, and the ugly of Fantastic. that project. Fantastic. Probably erring on the side of the ugly, I imagine. Yeah, great. But, I look um, forward to hearing that. We'll see how we go. Yeah, and maybe I can do the same one day about Fab Live. <laughs> You can spill the you beans. You can tell the everybody the how, how awful I am to work with <laughs> and what a disaster the whole thing is. Anyway, we know that. Um, Andrew Clements, any chance old Scarlet in the background there needs a new home for a little bid or two? No. Keep your hands up. He's him. very happy. Andrew, Especially really? now he's got his Thunderbird 1 to play with. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Emma Nichols is very happy. I think it was Emma who I just saw got. He mm. said that uh, our next broadcast is three days before her birthday. Uh, and Excellent. I think Chris Dale said it was three days after his birthday. Excellent. Bang in the middle. Yeah. Perfect uh, thing. Yeah, perfect thing. Uh, oh, Scott uh, Beakley, he says, when will the final volume of Captain Scarlet and the Mistrons be released on Blu-ray? Well. Oh, how long have you got? No, no. Oh. I, I can't say anything specific about it. Right. But I, I, tomorrow morning I'm having a meeting with Network, and that will be one of the things that we are discussing. Mm. And um, it, it, it will be soonish. Mm. Um, but I think it'll be worth the wait. Wow. Um, that is all I can say. Great. But keep your eyes peeled. Um, when it when it's on its way, we will be announcing via the uh, Usual Jerry channels. Anderson newsletter and mm -hmm. Facebook, etc. But it uh, won't be too long. Mm -hmm. Great. Looks like Scott is uh, <laughs> offering me three quid for uh, Captain Scarlet at the ballet. Three quid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it might be worth it. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris Honey, let's wish you a happy birthday. Your 50th birthday 50th on the birthday. 20th of June. Crikey, imagine being almost 50. Can I, uh, imagine that. It doesn't bear thinking No, about, it really does. It's so old, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, Chris. Yes, happy birthday, Chris. Um, you know, yeah. stay young by watching Jerry Anderson Indeed shows. Indeed so, yes. That's the best way to Quite do right. it. <clears throat> uh, Robert Hill, I don't know why you're 
commenting that. I can't possibly comment. Uh, but uh, keep your eyes peeled. Paul Harris says he'll take the uh, the Thunderbird 3 toy. He already has an offer to Orin. So he'll take the Thunder... Well, I don't think he'll sit on there, would he? Anyway, no one's having my toys. I don't know why people are starting to bid for things in my Ooh. spare room. Handbags. Mm. Uh, right, any final questions before we uh, disappear? Uh, will the podcast talk to anyone from the new Thunderbirds Are Go series? Uh, uh, we no. Probably won't, no. No, um, no Jen, we, we, we'll keep it spe- you know, specifically to, to stuff that... Uh, dad worked on or happened during his lifetime I think is the the main way to theme it so that yeah. ex- that precludes and excludes tag yeah great um, Andrew Sierra will be 22 Ugh. a week after July well yeah. everyone's going to have nothing to nothing special he says yeah 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 it's just True. a number it's just a number isn't it 22 <laughs> but happy birthday in advance yeah uh, yes, please do email us, fablive.jerryanderson.co.uk, with the exact number of days until your birthday <laughs> from FabLive16. That would be really great, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, anyway, seriously, we do really, really want... Oh, look, more questions. Simon Wood, Thunderbirds prequel on Big Finish. Oh, that's a lovely idea. It is a lovely idea. I, I am pretty sure, though, for the moment, that there is no creative work on Thunderbirds outside of TAG, right. just so ITV can focus on that, yeah. which is fine. But a lovely idea. Get Shane on the podcast. That's a good idea as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Shane is definitely uh, on my list to uh, to get on board. Yes, I'm sure he would be. He'll lovely. Be Great. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, and uh, that's probably about it for now, isn't it? I would think so. Yeah. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Have we done plenty? So yeah, thank yeah. you all for joining us. You've been wonderful as always. Yeah, um, yeah you have. We love all the comments. And we the do, yeah. Thank stuff. you for joining us as we witter on, sit here eating chocolate. And uh, in fact, this time, once you're done watching, mm. do share the, the, the broadcast again, mm. um, because lots of people might want to watch it at their leisure. Indeed so, that's right. Not everyone could join us live. Exactly. Right. And That'd most important of all, please now navigate away to iTunes or Stitcher or whatever your podcast app of choice is, find the Jerry Anson podcast, subscribe, rate, review, and listen to the prequel episode. And let us know what you think of the amazing new podcast theme tune yes. as put together by Benji Clifford. Yes, lovely. Right. Great. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. A lovely time. And we'll see you in July. Uh, yeah, July. Okay. I can't wait. And I'm, other I'm, 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 well, that's not, unless it's my one. You're actually going to take the last chocolate? Yeah, I literally am. Look at that. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. I licked it earlier, but you're welcome to it. I don't care if you licked it. I'll still eat it. It's really good. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Really good, that one, isn't it? Yeah. It's sort of... um, I was hoping to get that myself. What flavour is it? Well, there's a bit of um, strawberry in there, and it's sort of champagne, isn't it? What is that? Mm. Anyway, I hope you... Yeah. Choke on it. (laughs) I'm dead, then. (laughs) Oh, really, really excellent. <laughs> anyway, we stop now. <laughs>